And we are live. As we talk sports shine, we're real takes so face to face. We did tell you we're gonna start coming at y'all with videos. And this is one of the perfect times to do it though, Sean, because something happened last night where it changed the dynamic of everything. And mind you, I was shocked. And, you know, NBA trade season, it is around, it comes around the time. And it's happening early before the season even starts. Sean, Carl Anthony Towns was just traded to the Knicks. Julius Randle, Devin Chanzo, the first round pick, is the information that's out now, obviously, but it's going to be other team added to it, like Charlotte, to make the monies and the money match. But what was your instant reaction to hearing that Carl Anthony Towns got traded? So I uh, heard about this morning, SB. I woke up early to hit the gym and certainly, you know, saw the text from you and a couple other people sent me texts like wow um my first shock my first surprise my first reaction was um the knicks are trying to go all in and you know when they look at the landscape of the eastern conference and you think about you know boston and philly um and the knicks felt they were right there i think this move in their viewpoint i'm not saying my viewpoint i'm saying in their viewpoint Mm -hmm. makes them equal to or better than Boston um, um, from their viewpoint. It's starting a conversation. I'm not going to lie. Because yeah. I've been seeing too many videos like or like clips, and you know, Knicks fans especially, reacting to a cat's not tough enough to play for New York or why we let go of Julius Randle. I'm like, first of all, y'all been crapping on Julius Randle for like the past couple of years. Now all of a sudden y'all care about keeping Julius Randle. Cat. I think the biggest loss for the Knicks for me when I reacted to this trade, like they lost Di Vincenzo as part of the Nova Boys. And Di Vincenzo was a great shooter, clutch shot shooter, three point maker. I think y'all need to keep that, especially coming off the bench. But Eddie Cat does bring a different dynamic to this team because people not realize what's really on this team right now. You got a small scoring guard in Brunson who can get buckets, but he do need another guy who can consistently get buckets with him. I thought they maybe was going to go with that with Mikael Bridges. But Mikael Bridges is going to be that wing defender, shot maker, like the third guy. Then you got uh, Josh Hart, who can rebound with the best of them as a guard, might be the best rebounding guard in the league. Then you got OG Abinobi. And then you got Cat, who can stretch the floor. I think this team is going to be very, very, very dangerous. Now, I would, I know Mitchell Robinson should be coming back at some point in time. And I think maybe this move was the point to like, hey, we in win now mode. And also, just push for the button, like okay, Mitchell Robinson. Now we need to make a difference because people forget Cat is skilled. It might be one of the best shooting big mans of all time. You know, people laughed at that when he said it, but it's some truth to it. So my reaction to it the same way like yours is like the Knicks got to be in win now mode. And I think for me, I give the Knicks uh, an A on this trade. It would have been an A plus if David Chenzo wasn't uh, in a trade for the Minnesota Timberwolves side. I really give it like a C. A C plus at best because I do like Julius Randle. I think Julius Randle would do good in Minnesota. But the problem is your best player, Anthony Edwards, lives in the rim. He already had trouble getting to the rim with Rudy Gobert. And Cat being on the floor made the space easier. How he going to have spaces to attack the rim with Julius Randle and Rudy Gobert in the rim? Yeah, I think that's going to be a big issue. I mean, you know, I know a lot of people in from the Knicks perspective. But from Minnesota's perspective, I think this does a couple of things. One, this gives them a little more roster flexibility. Gotcha. Um, you know, Cat was due to make $49 million this season. Uh, the uh, aggregate totals of DiVincenzo and Julius Randle are about $40 million per season. So like you mentioned, mm -hmm. SB, there's going to be, you know, some more maneuvering that needs to be involved. Charlotte um, appears to be third team that's going to help facilitate this trade. Um, but I think from – you know, Minnesota's perspective, a couple things. First, um, this gives them more depth, right? You mentioned DiVincenzo. We know DiVincenzo yes. can come off the bench or he can start in spots if you need him to, but he definitely fills out their bench. I also think it will be interesting from Chris Greer's perspective of integrating Randall and maybe he finds a way to um, – make sure Randall gets some run with the second unit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Randall, you know, he, he, you got to engage him offensively. He likes yes. to be engaged offensively. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'm not saying Randall won't start. Obviously, Randall will start as a four. 
but just from the perspective of how you stagger the minutes. So again, there is the spacing for for Anthony Edwards, um, yeah. you know, long term. And I think probably the unspoken thing they got this trade was this trade also included a top 13 protected 2025 first round pick that mm-hmm. originally came from Detroit to the Knicks that the Knicks are sending to Minnesota. You know, I don't think anybody mm-hmm. expects Detroit to be great this year. So it's more like no. going to keep that pick yep. in 2026. If, if obviously the Detroit keeps that pick, unless there is some protections that aren't being um, reported, that mm-hmm. pick, will convey to Minnesota as an unprotected first round pick in 2026 again, allowing them to add potentially a high end talent mm-hmm. at a whole salary because again, they're looking at the, you know, their salaries long term. And then mm-hmm. from the perspective of Julius Randall, you know, he has a player option after this season. Yep. He is going to opt out. Mm-hmm. He's going to opt out because he's going to have some suitors on the open market. Can Minnesota retain him? Or potentially use him in a sign and trade, you know, to another team yes. to to again to continue to fill out their roster. But this, which clearly says to me, Minnesota is, is Anthony Edwards' team. He is yep. the top dog, and everybody's got to get in line behind him. Not that Cat wouldn't, but it's just yes. this rule clearly says that for me. Yeah, and I, I, it 100 says it to me, and I'm glad you brought up Cat because I think Cat everybody accepted that this was Ant's team. I was just so shocked that maybe they couldn't try to get go burnt off, but maybe nobody didn't want it. But Shy, I want to bring up other people's reaction too because everybody's reaction was a little different. But let's go into the man himself and Car Anthony Towns. Because if you guys look at this tweet right here, he just dropped three dots. So Car Anthony Town was out the loop of it at all. And Sean, this bring the case up of how fans say they never people shouldn't get mad at players because of what what happens to uh I mean people should get mad at players when they just up and leave teams and don't have loyalty to teams because things like this happen. Like you I always stick to, I always bring up the one story every time when Harrison Mars got traded mid game when he was on the Mavericks. And now you got Cat who just completely blindsided been loyal to the franchise through the ups and downs. And then he just up and just see he got traded to the Knicks. It kind of it, it kind of is a slap in the face, and then that's why you always tell players do what's best for you. Damn, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. Then now, so it's like now when you look at it, it's like I can't really get mad at players for leaving because now then when you look at Cat, also once he found out he was in the gym to three in the morning getting up shots, so I guess he's going. You guys got to take it on the chin that he's leaving. And then, I guess, move forward. But the Knicks is a good opportunity for him. He's going to compete for a championship. But I do think Minnesota was like a legit threat in the West. Now, I don't know if they could be a threat no more without Cat. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, I think they're, they're still a team. And, again, if they just look at the landscape of the West, I think they're still, without question, a top five, four or five team in the West. I think the teams that, you know, when you look at who's probably happy they made this move are Dallas. Um mm-hmm. Certainly Denver, uh, certainly Oklahoma City, um, mm-hmm. you know, maybe some, you know, other teams that we probably would consider, you know, that would fall below the standings of, mm-hmm. you know, where we have Minnesota projected. Uh, but that said, you know, the other thing I think that this does, and and I'll say there's a little bit of a um, addition by subtraction, is I think we're going to get to see the continued emergence of Nas Reed um, in yep. Minnesota as well. Um, and mm-hmm. you know, and again, Nas, he's he's learned how to stretch his game out a little bit more, yeah, sure. um, as well. Um, but also still brings that dude who plays like every game's his last mentality. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I love Nas Reed. I would love. I think every team would love Nas Reed yeah. on their team. Um, so I think that's the other thing they get from this. Um, as far as them trying to move Gobert, I know you mentioned you know Gobert yeah. earlier. You know, I don't know if. If there would have been the interest in Gobert like Cat, um, mm-hmm. but also know that I, I do believe that it was the Knicks who were the ones who were primarily, you know, making this, trying to make this happen. Yeah, and you know, and you know, also let's not forget the the other thing. Cat has played for Tom Thibodeau before, and we know Tibbs love to bring in guys who have played for him because they understand how he gets down. So yep. integrating those guys. Generally, mm-hmm. it's not going to be be a problem. 
But when we just look at the landscape of the Eastern Conference and, you know, again, Boston, Philly, mm-hmm. New York, who I think we all believe probably are the three best teams in the Eastern mm-hmm. Conference, it just got a lot more interesting um, with this move for the Knicks. Now, you mentioned their depth. That is going to be a concern. Yes. Um, you know, I, I do think it's going to be a little bit of concern. Not in the playoffs because we know Tibbs doesn't use his depth in the playoffs. Tibbs runs Tibbs run seven people. Yeah, you know, so not a big concern. But that said, again, you know, could there be another move on the horizon? Could, again, depending on what happens with Mitchell Robinson, whenever he gets back and he's healthy, yeah. could they look to move him? Yes. You know, somewhere to add some depth pieces, you know, that will will be interesting to see and you then, know, down the line. Nick, I, I told y'all already. Y'all think I'm joking by saying this. Call Dwight Howard. Cheap, cheapest, cheapest, cheapest version. You're going to get a Mr. Robinson right now. Go ahead, call Dwight. I'm going to say, you say Dwight. I'm, I'm going to say, call uh, Hassan Whiteside. Hassan um, Whiteside, cool. You know, again, you know, a little younger, someone who brings a defensive presence, you know, to the floor. We know he's a shot blocker, rebounder, things like that. Yep. And again, you know, probably get him for the cheap, just like Dwight, but mm-hmm. just a little bit younger. A little bit younger. Um, but let's look at the Julius Randle side. Like, I also brought up the fact that New York fans are reacting to Randall being gone, but I'm not going to lie. Imagine, I'm in a New York space, too. Uh, I'm going to start seeing my boys from New York on the YouTube side more. The YouTube, uh, so I got love in New York a little bit. I be, I be telling about the time they be cooking Randall. Now, all of a sudden, Randall gone, Sean. Everybody missed Rand. How you just gonna get rid of Randall? Randall was tough. I'm like, bro, y'all used to bull Randall. Y'all used to throw his posters on the floor. Now all of a sudden, now y'all miss Randall all of a sudden. And not too long ago, Sean, um, uh, Oral Monroe, new basketball renaissance school, named the court after Julius Randall just a couple days ago. And then they just traded him. All the New York legends was there. I guarantee the New York legends was there, probably like the owner or Tibbs, the manager there. How you just trade this man after you just name a court after this man in New York? You got to change to the Jalen Brunson court now or something. <laughs> well, well, I mean, listen, you know, if you play for the Knicks, I think, you know, certainly there's a, uh, you know, there's a big, big, you know, faction of people who, you know, will always embrace Julius Randle. And, you know, for as much love as Jalen Brunson gets, and certainly he deserves he what he's done the last couple of years. You know, it really started with Julius Randle coming there and starting mm-hmm. to emerge and kind of help put the Knicks back on the track Go of being there. at least a competent franchise and a competent basketball team. I think obviously Tibbs and Julius Randle would probably be the two you would point to, you know, with that. So he's going to mm-hmm. always be respected for what he did in New York. Yep. Um, and and so I don't know if they necessarily need to change the name of the court, but I do think, um, you know, uh, these guys understand, you know, particularly Julius Randle, he's been, he, you know, he was drafted by the Lakers, right? He's been mm-hmm. in the Lakers, he's been in New Orleans, he's been in New York, now he'll be in Minnesota. He understands this is a business and, mm-hmm. you know, there's always a possibility of, of moving around. Mm-hmm. This is Cat's first time dealing with this mm-hmm. and, so, so, you know, a little, little different situation, but certainly, you know, I, I think he, he understands his time as a Nick and, and certainly, you know, should, uh, you know, should be grateful for it. Now, Sean, I had gave my grade and react uh, for the trade. So what's your grade and reaction to the trade? For me, I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to give the Knicks an A-. minus. I'm going to give the Knicks an A-. minus. Um, again, I don't like lose, them losing DiVincenzo. Um, you know, it, it stinks. But, again, it wasn't that they wanted to get rid of DiVincenzo. It's, again, you have to aggregate salaries to mm-hmm. help make it happen. And again, there's still another move in the midst of this to come as well. So, you know, yes, we'll see yeah. how that plays out. Um, for Minnesota, I'm going to give them a cursory B plus. And, <laughs> and the cursory <laughs> B plus, the cursory B plus is, let's see what happens with Julius Randle long term. If they can't keep Julius Randle long term, or they can't turn Julius Randle into another asset, because again, he does have a player option after this season. Mm-hmm. Let's see, you know, kind of, you know, what happens. But so I'm going to give them 
a a a B plus cursory B plus cursory B plus. It's crazy. All right, guys, let us know. Comment down below under this video and let us know who you think won the trade and was Minnesota wrong for just tra tra trading cat like that. And is the Knicks really? I had the Knicks being one of the best teams in the East before this trade, but now I think this does add a different dynamic. So let us know in the chat, please, and make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Is SB Talk Sports, Sean Webb, Real Tech, Self Faith the Base. And we're going to bring more videos to you soon when all the breaking news come. So stay in tune, stay locked in. It's been Real Takes Over Fake Debates, and we are Audi.